what is up guys, Stu here. So last week, War for the Planet of the Apes was released in UK cinemas. Obviously, I went out and saw it, so let's talk about that shit. So aside from being quite the mouthful to say every time I want to talk about it, War for the Planet of the Apes is the latest in the rebooted Planet of the Apes trilogy, starting there with Rise, and then Dawn, and then now War. And this one is again directed by Matt Reeves, who directed the second one, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And if you've not seen much about it, essentially the storyline of this one is that there, there's a war on a planet with with apes everybody's looking for that something and i'm actually a really big fan of the previous two in this trilogy i really like rise of the planet of the apes i thought it was a solid entry some really great special effects work done in there and then dawn of the planet of the apes came out and just blew me away so i was obviously very excited for the next one i went into this one with some expectations on me because it's the fucking final one in a trilogy i love and then the embargo and reviews was lifted quite early for this one and some people were calling it a masterpiece? What? So my expectations were like, hey, um, I'm going up. I'm going up. There's no stopping me. So when I finally sat down and watched it, did it live up to those expectations? Yeah, on the whole it did. But I, I was slightly disappointed by some things which I'll get into. But yeah, this is, this is a really great film. So starring in this one again as the lead ape of the whole trilogy, Caesar, is Andy Serkis. And Andy Serkis... It, it, we, we, he's Andy Circus, guys. I don't have to tell you that he's basically the messiah when it comes to motion capture. And here he's doing some of his best work yet. He's just so good at Caesar. I, d I don't know whether it's because we've had two prior films to this to build up his character. But he just seems to know the character and just seems to nail it. But I think maybe because of that and because of advancements in some of the digital work from Weta here. It's just, it feels like a more emotive performance and we're going to get a bit more emotion from the apes in that sense. So I hadn't really felt so much for Caesar as a character as I have in this one. Uh, so that's really great to see. The dude smashed it to be expected. But also in the film we've got a couple of newcomers. Particularly the most prominent of those being Woody Harrelson who plays the kind of the lead bad guy of the humans in this film. He's the main army colonel who's going up against Caesar and trying to wipe out the apes. There are certain aspects of his character that I think kind of dropped the ball a little bit which I'll get onto in a bit but in terms of performance I think he did a great job here. He just feels like a menacing motherfucker. He does shit in a film and I'm like okay well uh, I don't want to fuck with Woody Harrison anymore so that's a thing. And in his scenes with Andy Serkis as Caesar I, I thought the two connected really well in terms of performances so uh, yeah I thought he brought really great stuff to the table here a very welcome addition to the cast but also there's a couple of new apes thrown into the mix most notable of which there being one called bad ape who is the kind of comic relief in the film he came on screen and i was like i i don't think this is gonna work no but actually i ended up getting on board with him and he did make me chuckle a few times and i do feel like it was it was good to have him in the cast but the direction from matt reeves here is Really great as well. Uh, we knew he's a good director from the previous films he's done. He did Cloverfield, which I fucking love. A hands up, one of my favourite monster films ever. But the previous Planet of the Apes, he did a great job with. I love that film. And here, whilst I think that there are certain things which aren't as good about it as the previous ones, the tone is not one of those things. I, I was very impressed with the way they went for the tone of this one. Because it's a much more bleak film than the previous two. It, it feels much more kind of sucked of life and just like, well... Well, shit sucks. Uh, shit sucks. We just gotta survive that shit. Which is impressive, not just because it starts to steer a little bit more darker than the previous two in the trilogy, but also just because it's a blockbuster Hollywood film which came out in July, which was allowed to go down that route. I, I, I really, I cannot believe that the studios were like, yeah, go for it. I feel like that just cannot have been an easy task. <laughs> I dread to think what was going through Matt Reeves' head when he was thinking about what he was going to pitch to them. I bet he was shitting himself. I bet real shit fell out of his ass onto the floor. I bet it happened. But he did it and he made the film, so kudos. But yeah, the darker and more bleak tone does actually really work with this one and it allows certain themes to come out which I think may have been hindered if it was just a straight up all war action film. But it's a much slower film for that and I think that's what's going to put a lot of people off. And I do think there are certain points where the pacing does drop considerably and almost loses me. But on the whole, it feels like a fairly even paced film. I was entertained through the whole thing and never really got bored, but I could understand how someone might watch it and get a bit bored because the war that's in the title does, doesn't really happen. I don't know if that's much of a spoiler, but um, yeah, it's not just like an hour and a half of monkeys and apes running at each other and clashing with big sweeping camera shots. That's not what happens here. It's a much more intimate look at those things. This is going to sound really cliche, so just prepare for a cliche statement dropping in three, two, one. It's a look at conflict within ourselves as opposed to within species. Yeah, fuck that. Nah, sounded, I, I'm not, nah. But yeah, the kind of more dark, somber 
tone of the film is really complemented by some fucking fantastic visual effects work from Weta Digital. I, I mean, a genuinely incredible stuff is done here. Pretty much 95% of the film, the apes look like they are there. There are like long shots on Caesar and the apes. I'm just like... Right, what part of this frame looks fake? Oh wait, hang on, none of it does. It all looks real. Holy shit, my head has been fried. So yeah, the VFX work did a lot to really help sell a lot of the tonal and direction side of things because if it had been jarring in any way, it would have sucked you right out of the film. But it really does help you to get in to the film and into the characters of the film, which obviously works much better for the tone and the darker tone that Matt Reeves is going for and the picture as a whole. But it's also kind of boosted up by some really beautiful cinematography. I, I mean, this is a gorgeous film. There are some really stunning shots in there, not just with the visual effects apes, but just in terms of the landscape, uh, the sand, the snow, the forest. It goes through various different landscapes and they all look gorgeous. So at least from a visual standpoint, I really can't fault this film in that regards. I think it, cinematography effects camera work it just nails it all and it is a gorgeous looking film so at the very least you kind of have to see it in the cinema if you want to see it so whilst i really loved on the whole the tone of the film and enjoyed what they did with the villain and and caesar's kind of final kind of fuck you to the humans in the end of the trilogy i can't help but feel like there are certain things which would have been much more effective if it hadn't been quite as rushed through as I think they were. And I get you don't want to make it too long and drag it down too much but there are certain aspects that you just either Keep it in the film and spread it out and go for it, or just don't put it in the film at all, man. It, it feels a bit odd being in there. Particularly towards the beginning, there's a moment where an ape dies and a character is very sad about it, and and I don't believe that character would be that sad about it at that point because that character hasn't had anything to do with that ape at all for the previous half an hour of the film. Just comes straight out of nowhere. Felt like a very obvious attempt to create some emotion within the audience and within the characters that just, well, it might not have necessarily not been there, but we haven't really been shown a lot of it, so I wouldn't really connect to it at all. And those moments are few and far between, but they're in there, so I've got to address them. But for all of those moments that felt a bit rushed and a bit forced and contrived, in that sense, there are also a lot of really great effective moments from an emotional standpoint, but also not just from a, oh, I'm sad, this is all, you know, shit's kicking off, I'm very sad that people are dying. Also in a sense that, like, fuck yeah. Go and fucking do it, Caesar. There's a lot of that, particularly in the final climax of the film, which I think was effectively dealt with and, and did kind of make up for some of the slips here and there in pacing that led to some less effective emotional moments in the film. And that's also a kind of similar thing that I got from the villain of the film, Woody Harrelson. I don't know, as we're going through the film with his character, when we're first introduced to it and when we're seeing him throughout just basically being a knobber to everyone, it's effective in that I feel like he's menacing, but it did feel a little bit like it was just like, okay, let's have Woody Harrelson just be a dick in this scene, be a dick in that scene. Oh, he's a dick, he's a villain, there you go. Where his character ends up going, I really loved. I loved the way that that was dealt with. That's actually probably one of my favourite scenes in the film. But getting there, I just couldn't help but feel like it was Woody Harrison walks in and, I don't know, fucking slaps Caesar, shoots an ape or something. Oh, fuck, he's a bad guy. Jesus. And there are also one too many instances of just throwing logic out the window and just moments where I could not help but be completely sucked out because... I don't believe that shit would have happened at all in that situation. And if you haven't seen the film, you might be sat there thinking, Stu, what the actual shit are you on about? This is a film about apes taking over fucking humans in the future. You gotta take a bit of a leap of faith when it comes to logic in films here. Apes might be taking over humans, but that doesn't mean that the humans are fucking blind, dumb, stupid idiots that can't see shit now. Because there are multiple moments in this film where characters are captured and are very clearly, you know, held in a very high security area with guards watching it. But then just seemingly at random, a character might just walk through and hang out. Why has no one seen this character? How has this been allowed to happen in the environment of the film that's been set up previous to this? There's one big moment where a character just straight up walks into a heavily guarded military complex and has like a 10 minute scene in there. Good scene, good work, but how the fuck did she get there? All it needed was one shot or one 30 second moment of showing something that might actually just make us go, oh, okay, well, they have clearly thought about this in the film as opposed to us just thinking, well, this is lazy and I didn't think about that, it's stupid. And I actually think that a lot of those more, I guess, ridiculous moments in the film might not have been so much of a problem had it not gone for such a bleak and serious tone for the film overall. I think it's one of those things where the tone that they go for works when it's working, but when there's even the slightest crack in it and it gets a little bit ridiculous, it sticks out like a sore thumb. So I couldn't help but get annoyed at that stuff, despite the fact that a lot of that stuff actually didn't suck me out of the film too much. And for the most part, I was absolutely loving myself watching this film, which... <laughs> 
Again, sounds like I just sat there playing with myself in a cinema, which is creepy and probably illegal. I was disappointed by a lot of elements of the film, but I still loved it and think it was a lot better than other films I've seen lately. So for me, whilst it's not Matt Reeves' best film or the big masterpiece that everyone was saying it was, or the best Planet of the Apes film we've had yet, I still really enjoyed it. For me, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes has to take it as my favourite from the trilogy because I just fucking love that film. I think it's so great. And this film, whilst I did love it, it just, it's got a few too many moments which I just felt like held it back from being incredible. So I'm going to go ahead and give War for the Planet of the Apes a four stars. Disappointed it isn't a five stars, but still, that's a good film. I had a really good time with this one. But what about you guys? Have you seen War for the Planet of the Apes at this point? And how does it compare to the other two in the rebooted Planet of the Apes trilogy? I said for me, Dawn's my favourite, but I know a lot of people really love Rise and hated Dawn. Interested to see what you guys thought about where this one lines up with the other two in the trilogy. So let me know about that in the comments below. Links to social media are also in the description, so go through to there and click follow if you like. And as usual, if you like this review and you want to see me talk about more shit, please go ahead and click subscribe. But until next time, stay beautiful, mother truckers. <laughs>